Mrs. Parker House had very definite ideas about the powder room that she communicated to Viney through the signs she left behind. Fancy cloth towels neatly folded in thirds and fanned out on the counter. Toiletries that eau de cologne tucked in small wicker baskets. Stark overhead lights replaced with dimmer decorative bulbs. The ladies' sign on the door didn't change, yet soon enough everyone at the stables knew to call it the powder room. Inside it had expanded to include individual stalls with plantation shutters, a marble top vanity to replace the cracked basin sink, and wall-sized mirrors where low counters and plush stools invited serious primping. Shortly after the powder room's transformation, a low stool covered in needlepoint and a crystal dish shaped like a leaf had found a home within, next to a parchment tip shop sign scrolled in gold ink. The stool stood far enough from the plate to be out of reach, yet close enough to a stack of fresh hand towels. That same day, Miney had heard from Mildred, who had heard from TJ, who had heard from the owner, Billion, that Mrs. Parker House had a more traditional job in mind for the aging Miney. Mildred had added that TJ had said that Billiard had told him that Mrs. Parker House saw this new position as a graceful step towards retirement. She said that, Miney asked. Retirement? Mildred replied, no, graceful. Mildred nodded. I had my doubts before, but now I know. She picked on the lady. Viney had witnessed many Parker houses come and go through the years, all puffed up with their own set of signs, only to wear themselves out against the stable's stubborn sense of itself. In the early days, she had tried to warn them that those signs would be their ruin. In the end, she realized they weren't ignoring her words, but simply couldn't hear them as such. Her words provided the necessary background to make their own decisions. Mrs. Parker House, however, usually didn't tell anybody anything, except maybe Billiard. Everybody just knew. The air vibrated with Mrs. Parker House wants and Mrs. Parker House said, and whether one person's view agreed with another's was not anybody's Everybody was right, as long as they claimed Mrs. Parker House had said so. <laughs> this created a perpetual confusion, since sooner or later contradictions arose. One week the kitchen floor was waxed to an inch of its life, and the next week it was dulled by bleach. One day the bus boys wore their collars down and buttoned, another day they stood them straight up with the top button open. <laughs> One day ice poured from pitchers. And another day, ice held itself in the pitcher's lip. Some days, the hurricane lamp flame stood still and straight, while other days, they danced and fluttered like demons. Everybody followed the signs through which Mrs. Parker House made her wishes known. Sometimes, when one story contradicted another, people argued about whose version was true and whose was just somebody trying to sound important. <laughs> There were these stories about Mrs. Parker House's true nature as determined by the signs those in dispute claimed to have seen. There were stories about her looks. In the latter stories, contradictions were readily reconciled given how one's looks were subject to change. Thin to fat to thin again, red hair to blonde to silver to black to white, extravagantly frilly to mannishly severe to quietly demure. New staff learned quickly that nobody would let them get away with stories about first-hand sightings. And as far as expressing any doubts about the truth of Mrs. Parker House's existence, those ended as soon as they started. Who do you think hired you? Veteran staff growl. Them, the new one would point to Joan or Mildred, Hal, Al, or Ernie, or sometimes without thinking Thinking it through, the TJ, the doorman, who, after all, wore the most impressive uniform. <laughs> ha! Old timers would scoff. Read your paycheck. In fact, billiards, not Mrs. Parker House's signature, made its appearance on all the checks. But by the time the new workers received their
their first check. They knew better than to go looking for such proof. By then, they heard a dozen times over about something Mrs. Parker House had seen them do and wanted them to do differently, things often nobody else could know about, like dipping their dirty fingers in the water pitcher, or chopping onions lengthwise instead of crosswise, things that sometimes they didn't even know they were doing. Sometimes new hires like Essie would just quit when she was told her underpants touched the bathroom. <laughs> and the busboy with the light brown afro with the Greek name nobody could remember was told to stop practicing cartwheels in the lounge. <laughs> Like a 
rude dance whose steps she had struggled to learn. 